Lister and I work with Deep Photonics and uh, Deep in Berlin. And I want to talk to you today about the scalable design of integrated photonic circuits and also of electronic circuits. Um, our vision is to start uh, directly from the photonic circuit simulation. And from this uh, environment, you could actually get all kinds of component characteristics. You could uh, visualize or can analyze how a certain ship would be in the system application. So you could get eye diagrams, tunable characteristics, etc. You can investigate different architectures, find tolerance analysis, etc. But as we also heard from Peter before, um, in an um, environment alone that would not work properly, you have to have the circuit simulation as part of an integrated ecosystem of different simulation tools and also uh, processes. So for one thing, you would have um, like the integration of uh, live DDK libraries, which give you only specific models, and you want to have a bidirectional interface into layout design tools, which allow you to get information about the layout directly um, as a part of your design, so you can get locations and dimensions of your, of your waveguides directly considered into the circuit simulations. Also, it's quite crucial that these individual building blocks are modeled properly, so you can actually have the device simulators or measurements or others different types of uh, simulators depending on the type of modules that you actually work with and extract the device parameters needed then on a more abstract level for your circuit design. And if you do optical electronic um, circuit designs, of course you want to interface with electronic design information tools for electronic uh, electronic post simulation. So I will give you some examples for all of those um, um, uh, interfaces here and I will start with the interface between the device and uh, um, circuit simulations. Um, so let's take the simple example here for a free ring filter. So we want to have this type of layout here. And in order to um, simulate this, we will build this up in the circuit simulator. And uh, similar as um, Peter mentioned before, we're using here fundamental building blocks of the waveguide, which has a certain type of parameter, the waveguide parameters, which could be derived from mode solvers, like a uh, two-dimensional um, uh, mode solver here with the mode designer. Other applications are much more complicated, like a coupler here, and you could use a more sophisticated uh, uh, device simulator from CSD, three-dimensional solver, and here you directly get the S matrix out and use this S matrix as a parameter describing this coupler. And having this information, you could actually test the, uh, the chip here by sending some input in and getting the spectrum out and getting the characteristics in a circuit simulation. Let me go deeper a bit into this uh, work for example with how this works with the CST part here. So uh, for this example, I have here um, the same structure as before, just I have like two uh, three ring filters with slightly different radius, and we have the two different type of couplers here, A and B. So A would be um, this one with a straight wave cut of the ring, and this would be between two rings. And they would be simulated uh, with CST directly, and then all the, the whole thing would be import, uh, exported into a, a circuit simulation using then the pre-calculated S matrices for A and B here. Then, and uh, then the simulation can be performed into a circuit simulator. The whole thing just takes a few seconds. And for comparison, if you want to simulate this directly in CST, which is the most accurate way, full wave simulation, this would take several hours. So the main advantage we get from this one for the similar accuracy, you get much, much faster uh, simulations. And because this interface is of method, uh, you can actually run multiple simulations very easily. So for instance, it's also possible to interpolate uh, pre-calculated S matrices, such that the intermediate parameters of, let's say, the air gap width between those couplers here, you don't have to rerun the CSD simulation, but you just interpolate between the pre-calculated S matrices. And this allows you to perform sweep and optimization of those component parameters, and also uh, perform near estimation analysis. Let me show this example. So we have here, um, again, to the single uh, free ring filter example. We now want to run multiple simulations where you randomly vary the air gap width of those, um, of those couplers. And for this, we have here this uh, interface uh, tool allowing you to um, set the, um, the, uh, the variations of the air gap width of uh, coupler A and B according, in this case, to Gaussian statistics. We run the whole thing uh, for 500, 500 runs here. This would be this one here. And we set this, uh, the mean should be 80 nanometers, and the standard deviation would be 2 nanometers. So. And then the simulations run 500 times, and we get the output of the passband transfer. And to zoom in into the uh, passband here, we see the ripple. And other set of 
this allows us then to, uh, to calculate the ripple over this range here. And if we have set a, a certain cutoff value before, which was 1 dB here, which is actually this one here, we can automatically come up with the yield of this device. In this case, it's 79%. And if I vary these variations here, we get uh, different output uh, scenarios here. So this would be working for a general case uh, type of uh, building blocks then. But uh, of course, you want to integrate this for the uh, for PD case itself. And uh, as I showed you before, we have this component model library, which can use data derived from device simulators, interacting with the circuit simulator using data fitting and manipulation, utilizing data. And all you need then for the PDA, PDK creation would be then the specific parameters and tolerances uh, which are specific to the individual formulas here and then have this building block libraries corresponding to these formula specific uh, characteristics. <coughs> so here is an example uh, using the uh, new phosphate based um, uh, uh, PDK from smart photonics here. It's based on this design example of a widely tunable laser source, all the way created by the new phosphate. And, uh, because of the uh, information is all known, uh, we can actually extract directly the, um, the, the layout information here automatically from the box designer and also get for, for some of those waveguides here, get the very specific layout information back into the tool and uh, utilize the specific layout information and then perform uh, simulations where we vary um, the current here of, of the space shift that you see the different the tuning characteristics of this laser. So this would be for a given uh, a PDK library then. What if I have like additional building blocks I want to add to this library then? And for this reason we added, uh, have another example of an optical buffer where we have here a delay line which corresponds to 9.4 millimeters. On our case for a certain uh, modulation with here on the peeing here and would be correspond to 4 bits. So that leads to a very uh, user-defined layout and possibly also a user-defined simulation model for this experimental EAM, which could be added directly to the PDK by the user having either specific information from the foundry or actually um, just testing something out, which would be very dedicated to its design. And of course, using then again getting the automated export to the layout. Again, this would be a single PDK, and other applications would be where we have a hybrid uh, integration. Again, a widely tuned laser source, we have an indium phosphate based uh, gain shift and uh, a PTEX circuit, which is an silicon nitride, using this uh, triplex uh, foundry of uh, Leonix. So, in this case, we use uh, here the, um, the PDK information for one PDK, and here in this case would be generic uh, indium phosphate block, but this could be then from this, another indium phosphate based foundry um, utilizing this information. So, in the circuit simulation, it's very important that you be able to combine this all together and uh, be able to simulate actually what's happening between the different uh, um, technology steps. For instance, if you have some reflections here between the active and the passive parts, definitely the tuning characteristic and lines would uh, change dramatically. Okay, so I covered uh, these examples here. Now we're going to touch uh, for optoelectronic application, uh, uh, one example. And here the world is a bit uh, different. Uh, generally, if, uh, any uh, electro-optic and optoelectronic device, this one and this one, uh, can be seen as a combination of a photonic and electrical circuit, which has like interface building blocks here, in this case would be a modulator, here could be a photodiode, then, which integrates um, the electrical circuit and the, um, the photonic circuit with each other. And assuming there's no direct feedback between those terms, you can perform sequential simulations of the photonic and electronic parts there. And this drastically uh, speeds up your, your the simulation, uh, simulation and the design capabilities. Then. Exchange would then be in frame of electrical waveforms and optical waveforms. Then. So here would be an example for a, a pump for transceiver design where exactly this is um, uh, taking place. Uh, we realized this uh, environment by integrating with the Tana as edit from the Mentor Graphics, um, where we do the schematic capture directly in as edit. And so we create here the electrical schematic for the driver, for, this, um, for instance, for, for the modulator and for the transmitter. Also, the creation of the photonic schematic here. And this is all based on the library of um, a, a demo, a demo PDK based on silicon phosphide where we have field representation of these cells 
actually directly linking to the models in the, in the photonic environment. And uh, the simulations would be done directly uh, in the electronic simulations in the mental environment and the photonic simulations <coughs> in the environment. And these simulations can be triggered directly from as added via netless exchange here. And the analysis of the data can be done in both domains and uh, electrical data, typically in the mental graphics domain and optical data in the uh, photonics domain. So let's look for one example again, a dual polarization of thinner modulator for point four. So we first create the photonic circuit cell and I said it, which will be this one here. And uh, we create the electrical circuit for the fiber. This will be at first we create a device um, simulated setup. And then we create actually all of this, make it actually create the data source for the photonic circuit. And then we integrate both of them together like this one here, and this one will be a cell inside here to create the photonic uh, schematic view, where we have a laser, the modulator, and then some analyzer just put here. So in order to simulate the whole thing in TANA as added, we can directly run this uh, spice simulation, so to resolve this one and get the data, which would be fed in here. And uh, <coughs> then in order to run those uh, photonic simulations, we first have to translate this information <coughs> into the uh, photonic nest list, and then use the pre-calculated data, feed this in here, and run the whole simulation, get the eye diagrams, in this case in optics domain, and this would be the driver characteristics. So this would be for designing the, the transmitter itself. And maybe one more step would be then to investigate how our pump or transmitter would uh, behave in system characterization. So typically system qualifications for intra-data center applications of, uh, based on certain standards here. We <coughs> measure the TDECQ, which is the transmitter dispersion eye closure penalty for pump four applications. And this means uh, here for this type of applications, you don't want to see just how the spectrum or the eye diagram looks like. You want to see how the pump four source, including like the duct driver, CW laser, maximum monitor, would behave after a certain piece of fiber a receiver and a standard optimized uh, at a vehicle that equalizer then. Pipe that equalizer and certain taps there. And uh, that in the standard it's defined how to optimize the sector then. And uh, this can be done automatically on the system design tools and also uh, you can then see what's happening if I, in this transmitter then for instance vary the on say that it be bandwidth or if I have certain uh, wind levels for my laser and see here whether I need my TDCQ spec of 3.4 dB or whether I would <coughs> feed, possibly feed this part back to the device and simulations. Okay, with this I'd like to summarize. Uh, I try to emphasize that in order to make a scalable design of highly integrated photonic and optical kind of circuits, we need an integrated uh, integration of all the different design tools and processes. And uh, I demonstrated that schematic driven design methodology, which we use here, gives you lots of uh, benefits here. And it's very crucial that you have an accurate and functional dependent modeling of the underlying uh, building. <coughs> Thank you very much. <coughs>